Hey everyone, good morning and welcome to the vlog. It's Tuesday, it's the start of a new weekly vlog. And first off, I'm gonna walk through what we are reading. I, as per usual, don't really have many plans. Um, for this week, Charlotte and I are going to go see the new k Stu movie on Thursday, so that's like the most exciting part of the week. Um, but other than that, it's probably just gonna be a lot of hanging around. Um, I first up on the TBR is to finish some books that I have been working on. Um, the first one of that is The Odyssey by Homer. I have about an hour and a half left of this audiobook. Um, I'll finish this today while I'm working. Um, and then I am reading The Frozen River by Ariel Lawhan. I'm on page 149. Um, so I'm finally making some progress and I'm excited to finish this up. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, and then we have my next nonfiction that I'm going to read on audio. That's going to be Diamonds and Deadlines, A Tale of Greed, Deceit, and a Female Tycoon in the Gilded Age by Betsy Priolo. Um... I usually, my goal was only to read one nonfiction a month, but I'm in a readathon this month where one of my categories is nonfiction. So I'm going to read more nonfiction than I would usually read in a month. So I'm trying to decide, like, if I read multiple nonfictions in this month, can I, like, carry those on, like, as some of the nonfictions that I would have read, read in the other months? Or do I have to still read a nonfiction every month? Like, this is my second nonfiction of March. So, can I count this as my nonfiction for April? You know what I mean? Um, help me decide. And then the book that I'll pick up once I finish The Frozen River is The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlisle. Um, this would be my second thriller for the readathon so at this point I've read a non-fiction and a thriller horror novel um and then the odyssey will count towards a general reading and then I have to read a historical fiction but I can't count the frozen river as a non uh, historical fiction pick for that prompt because I started it um in February, so it can't count towards the readathon, but I don't want to jump right from the Frozen River to my historical fiction pick, so I thought that a thriller would be a nice quick um, palette cleanser, and then I can pick up um, my historical fiction pick. So if I get to that in this vlog, you'll know what it is. If not, you can you'll find out later. But anyway, I am going to get myself some breakfast and I'm gonna read and eat before I have to log into work so hey everyone it is Wednesday I don't think I updated at all yesterday after starting um, the vlog but I do have some quick updates for you while I'm on my break from work um, I did finish The Odyssey and I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a three star for like the actual story of The Odyssey. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like Odysseus and so I had a really hard time like really being invested in his story. There were definitely aspects of the story that I found really interesting but at some point, I was like, you've really got to get your shit together, Odysseus. Um, but I am giving it a four-star rating for Emily Wilson's translation. Um, she did it wonderfully. She did. She wrote it in iambic pentameter. So because the way that the poem would have originally been read isn't done anymore. Uh, iambic pentameter is like the closest thing that can be um, 
that's similar. So she wrote it in that and it was really easy to follow um, and engage with. And she also put a lot of effort into removing kind of the misogynistic wording and writings that were included in the Odyssey throughout other translations, even though it wasn't there in the original like story of it by Homer, um, including some of the other changes that she made to the translation to make it better. I would recommend this for somebody who maybe hasn't read the Odyssey yet um, or maybe is a little intimidated because it really wasn't um, difficult to follow along. Um, though I did listen to it on audio so that definitely helped um, and Claire Danes was the narrator and I thought she did wonderfully. So overall I'm going to give it a four star rating. Um, and that's my classic Anna General Fiction for the uh, readathon that I'm in. Um, but after I finished the Odyssey, I did pick up um, Deadline Diamonds and Deadlines, A Tale of Greed, Deceit, and a Female Tycoon in the Gilded Age. This is about Miriam Leslie. She was a woman in the Gilded Age. Um, she had a lot of things going for her. She w ended up being a tycoon of the publishing uh, industry. Um, she also did a lot for the women's suffrage movement. She left her whole fortune upon her death to the women's suffrage movement, which was like so important for women to get the ability to vote. Um, she also lived a very scandalous life from like the way that she was raised to her three divorces. She had a menage a trois for like a decade. Um, I'm like really the, oops, um, the like introduction or whatever it was at the beginning of the audiobook like drew me in so fast. I'm like so obsessed with her already. Um, she sounds so cool and so powerful and so influential. She's definitely going to be someone that you are going to want to know. Um, I think it'd be a great nonfiction, um, especially in March for Women's History Month. Um, she was also suspected to be biracial. So there's a lot of things that are working against her, not only because she's a woman in the Gilded Age, but also because she's biracial. Um, and still she was able to persevere and succeed and do all these wonderful, wonderful things. I am still in chapter one. Um, so I listened to um, the, what was it? The introduction, the prologue, and now I'm in chapter one. Um, but I am like thoroughly, thoroughly invested and really enjoying listening to it. So my break is almost over. So I'm going to go back to work um, and continue to listen to this. Um, other than that, I have some laundry that I have to get done today. I did get Baldur's Gate working on my computer again, so we are good for now. I did, I am happy that I did the research about a gaming laptop, and then I also did some more research about, like, a PlayStation 5 or a gaming computer, so that if I continue to have some issues, we can, like, we're, like, we've got our base, um research done and we can go from there and then I also forgot to edit my video from last week last week's vlog to go up this morning so I'll have to do that on my lunch so it'll be going up a little late I'm still not like used to getting up on Wednesdays to edit when I don't have to bring William to school on the weeks that he's not here so I need to like set a different alarm that tells me to actually get out of bed but Anyway, I'm going to get back to work, and I'll check in later. Hey, everyone. It's Thursday, and I'm just doing a real quick update before I start work. Um, I did read quite a bit of um, Diamonds and Deadlines, A Tale of Greed, Deceit, and a Female Tycoon in the Gilded Age. 
I am up to, I think I didn't move it. I think I finished this chapter. Um, but I know I at least read up to page 108. Um, and by read, I also mean I listened to on audio. Um, let's see. I have five hours and 39 minutes of this left, and I do intend on listening today, though I think I'm going to run out of Spotify hours before I finish the book, and I think I'm going to be like maybe an hour. I'm going to have like an hour left of the book, so I have to decide if I'm going to finish it like just by reading it or if I want to pay for an additional 10 hours of Spotify. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I am not loving the narrator, I'll admit, for this one. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe it's more pronounced because I'm listening to it on like 1.5 speed. But when she swallows, I can hear her swallowing. Like I can hear like the mouth and throat noises. And I don't like that in an audiobook. So I am having a little bit of trouble with that. But luckily it doesn't happen all the time so I just make one of these faces um and then we move on um but I am enjoying this we are so far up to her second husband and we are learning about um her this affair that she has um and she is currently putting out a She currently has like a column or something in um, Frank Lewis's newspaper. And at the same time, this is also happening at the 1876 Centennial Exposition. Um, it's the first international fair in the United States. And she's also being um, snubbed for Mrs. Astor's like really popular balls so she's realizing that she even though she is a very like famous woman of this time and she's like making a lot of um waves she's not necessarily making them in the way that will get her accepted into like the victorian ladies like the gilded age ladies uh, social circle so <sighs> It's I'm I'm really enjoying it and I think she's I think she's incredible but I'll probably read a little bit more of this and then um I do intend on picking up the frozen river when I get out of work to read a little bit of that. Um we also watched Vanderpump Rules. And I have a lot of feelings about Vanderpump Rules. I don't like how Tom Sandoval is getting a redemption arc. I don't think he should get one. I think he's awful. Um, and I really hate how um, they're pushing that down our throats. And I don't like how they're painting Ariana. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is Ariana's last season. They're pointing, painting her out to be... Um, completely unre unreasonable for these expectations that she set, like, these boundaries that she set for herself, and I think they're perfectly valid, um, boundaries, and I think everybody else is being ridiculous. I don't understand why everybody wants Tom Sandoval to stick around. He literally doesn't do anything but cause problems. He's, like, literally the worst. Um, And I also think, this is my theory, I think Sheena was also his mistress. I think Sheena was sleeping with him. Um, and if she wasn't sleeping with him, I think she desperately wants to. And I think that she's pushing so hard for Tom Sandoval's redemption arc because I think she's hoping that she will get with Sandoval. And then she and Tom will be like the head stars of Vanderpump Rules. Um... And because she is so desperate for everything to be about her. She's constantly complaining about how sad she is about losing Tom as a friend, even though he was a terrible friend. Um, and then in the season, like the midway season trailer, there's like this moment where she is like, what did I mean to you? And it's like, girl, 
it seems very intense and this like grief period that she's going through and the whole thing at Tahoe, it just seems like that's a lot for somebody who is just friends, just friends with somebody. I don't believe they were just friends. I think they were having sex. Um, I think she was also his mistress and I think she um, punched Rachel because she thought she was the only mistress and then it came out that uh tom was also sleeping with rachel like i think that's i i personally that's my theory i don't like sheena um everything always has to be about sheena and i'm so over it so just a quick update um now that i'm going on my lunch um i don't know if this will happen every time but if you run out of spotify audiobook listening hours and you're already listening to the book I think it will still work it will just let you keep listening and I think it will let you keep listening until you like pause and close out of Spotify because I had like an hour ish maybe an hour and 30 minutes left of this book and so I just didn't close out of Spotify I just kept listening to it and it um it sent me an email saying I was out of hours uh but it just keep kept playing my audiobook so I was able to successfully finish this book today um I'm gonna think about a review I'm leaning towards like a three and a half star rating um but I'm gonna sit with it and you know uh my initial my initial my initial rating is like a three and a half star um, but I'm going to sit on it for just a little bit and think about it and process what I listen to. Um, and then I'll update you further. I am on my lunch. I'm going to go clean the kitchen really quick. Um, so that when Charlotte gets home, the kitchen is clean for us to make dinner so we can all eat together. William is also here with me tonight, which is exciting. And, um... Then if I have time after I clean the kitchen, I'm going to read a little bit of The Frozen River. Hey everyone. So it is Friday after work and I did do a little bit of reading of The Frozen River. I'm like halfway through. I am really loving this. So I'm on page 189. At first, I think I said that it was pretty slow going, but now that I'm like into it, I just want to keep reading it every time I pick it up I just want to keep reading and it's really fascinating because like we have the story of the murder and the rape happening but we also are going back in time to see some of Martha's younger years and why and the things that happened to her that make her so passionate about this specific incident that's happening and we're also seeing like the daily life in this town and for Martha and her family and like I'm just really enjoying all aspects of it the um love story between Ephraim and Martha is I'm giddy over it I'm like kicking my feet it's so cute um I love it so much um but yeah, I'm like thoroughly invested in loving it um, now that I'm like pretty far into it. Um, I'm out of work now, I think I said. So I am about to sit down and eat a later dinner. And I'm going to read while I wait for Charlotte to get home. So that's the plan. Um, and then once I finish this, the goal is to move on to The Girl in the Mirror since I finished my other book that I'm reading this week. So we are making quite a lot of progress, even though I don't think I've been very good at updating. Um, but yeah, I'm going to eat, I'm going to read, and then I will talk to you guys later. Hey friends, it's Saturday. I am coming to you before I log into work to show you that I have a fairy loot box. Now, I didn't order Fairy Loot. I'm not on their subscribers, but I did have Mercari money, and when I saw that one of the books that I'm interested in was done by Fairy Loot, 
I used my Mercari money and I bought it. And I think I also got everything that was like in the fairy loot box. Like I think the seller was just selling everything. So I thought I would do like a little fairy loot haul for you. Um, and then I'll probably have to figure out what I'm going to do with all these things. So we have a uh, fourth wing hat. I'm not going to wear that, so I'll have to figure out, again, what I'm going to do with all these things. Um, there is a bookish tote, which we always love, and I do love these colors, so I'll put it in my tote bag collection. Um, and then we have a mug from the Jassad Air which I'm sure would make a lot more sense to me if I had read the Jassad Air yet, but I haven't. So I'm not really sure I get why there's a goose on it. But there's a goose on it, and it says she had the temperament of a deranged goose. But I'm not upset about it because I am Baldur's Gate girly, and um, this also just makes me think of Gustarian. Who's the goose that's on the loose goose starring? So anyway, that's exciting, and I love that. Um, and then, I don't want it to fall and break. That would be sad. And then we have Crimson Moth Friendship Keychains. So, they're just these cute little keychains. And then... The bag, the book comes in, but the book is not in there. They wrapped it separately. So we have the art cards, page of moons, oh, night of moons, and four of moons. Now, I don't know if these are like for the book or if they're just like for something else. Um, I'll have to ask. There's a bookmark very hot and then there's an art card that matches so that's so cute oh so the art cards are for characters from the crimson moth which is so exciting and then we have the book let me move all this stuff out of the way So, like, are you joking? She was the Crimson Moth, a wanted criminal, not to mention a witch, hiding in plain sight. But this wouldn't be the first time she walked into a space full of people who hunted her kind. She'd done it hundreds of times before without batting an eye. So why was there a tiny seed of fear sprouting in her? So I did get this book, um, The Crimson Moth by Kristen Kicciarelli, for my book of the month pick um, last month. But I, the cover of this is beautiful. And also the U.S. edition is called Heartless Hunter, and I like uh, the title The Crimson Moth better. I don't, why do they have different titles in the UK versus, you know, the US? I'm not really sure. So then we have this. <gasps> Are you joking? These sprayed edges. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And then it also... has like this cover as well but so that's my exciting little haul uh, anyway that's my update I did read up to page 204 yesterday in the frozen river so we are making some progress I do intend on reading this I don't know what got on the back of the book but it is what it is um 
I'm making some progress and I also before work today um queried two agents for my own book which is exciting um I have reasonable expectations for how the query process is going so I imagine that I would not be surprised if um it takes a while for me to hear back but I have pause I'm putting positive thoughts out and I'm going to continue to um like research agents and query them my goal is to query for six months and if nothing pans out then I'm going to pursue self-publishing um but I would really like to give myself the chance to try to query an agent so I'm starting that process I'm going to try and query at least two agents a week that's my goal because it really stresses me out makes me really nervous I like felt like I needed to throw up after doing it so I think two is a good starting point until I start getting more used to the process. Um, but I will for sure keep you updated on how things are going. But for now, we've submitted two queries and we are putting positive intentions and positive thoughts out there to see how it will go. Um, I'm going to get to work and I will check in later when I do some more reading. Monday it's the last day of the vlog and yesterday I didn't update you I don't think at all we were pretty busy we picked up Will we went shopping for some pants um then we went to breakfast the three of us and we went to the independent bookstore near my parents house um because we don't really get to go there anymore because it's uh pretty far away now and um then we had dinner and stuff at my parents house um so we were just hanging out there so not really much to update you on um but i did re start reading beyond the highland mist yes by karen marie moaning because i was scrolling through tiktok and there were a whole there was this one video where um everybody on the comments was like she's like the queen of fantasy or queen of romance so i was like okay i'll give it a try and this one's a highlander romance i am thoroughly having a great time with it i um read 20 percent yesterday so up to page 70 um essentially we have our main girl adrian she is from 1997 but she's plopped from 1997 into like the 1500s scotland and she is f basically forced to marry this laird i think he's a laird he his name is hawk and he has a reputation for being like the biggest ladies man um all the women want him. He, um, one of his most recent women that he was with tried to kill him because he wasn't, he was done with her and she like couldn't handle that. And so, but she has no interest in him because of something that happened in her previous, uh, like in her real life. We don't exactly know all the details yet, but essentially she's like, I do not trust pretty men. I don't trust beautiful men. Um, I'm never going to be with a beautiful man ever again. And then now she's married to like the most beautiful man. Um, and she is insistent. She's like, no, I don't want to be with you. And so she's also from 1997 where women have more power and control um, than women in 
1500 Scotland. So she's much more strong headed, um, opinionated, um, not willing to take some of, uh, what, like not willing to accept some of the things that other women of the time are willing to accept from men. Um, and this is driving Hawk crazy. Um, I'm, I'm having so much fun with it, but I'm going to take a break from that for right now. Um, because I would really like to finish frozen river today i don't know if i'm going to if i'm being completely honest i'm on page 204 and we have there is four hundred and twenty seven pages left so we've got over 200 pages to read in this could I do it I think I could um I and I really don't want to carry this over into next week's vlog because this that would be like the third week that this book has been I've been like I'm gonna read this um and I just can't bring myself to do that so I am going to really try to finish this book today um and we're just gonna hope my bookmark came untied have to fix that but that's the goal for today I did let myself sleep in I didn't let myself relax because it's my Sunday um but other than that I have some cleaning and some laundry that I have to get done so Fingers crossed I finish the frozen river because that would just be the icing on the cake for the week. So I'm going to get to reading and I will keep you updated on how things go. later it's like 11 p.m. I did finish the frozen river and I'm so glad that I'm not having to carry this into another reading vlog um I'm gonna sit on it and think about it for a little bit until tomorrow when I wrap up the vlog but I think I'm leaning towards a four star rating um, ultimately I really did enjoy it. Um, it was a slow start for me, but I'd like to like think about it a bit before I settle on a final rating though. You will find out, um, tomorrow before I close up the vlog. Um, I am sleepy though and my camera's about to die. So what I am going to do is take my Kindle and we are going to go get in bed and get cozy and read more of Beyond the Highland Mist while I plug in my camera and let it charge. Um, you probably won't hear back from me until tomorrow morning when I do a wrap up, but just to refresh, I did read, um, about 30 more pages while I was waiting for Will um, at school pickup. So I'm at page 110 or 30% into Beyond the Highland Mist. So that's what I'm going to go read right now. We finished The Frozen River 
and we finished a nonfiction this week, so it was a really good week. So yeah, I'm gonna quit talking and go get cozy with my Kindle, and I will see you in the morning to wrap up the vlog. Good night. Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, it's the end of the vlog, and I am just going to do a quick wrap up of everything that we read last week. So I read Diamonds and Deadlines, A Tale of Greed, Deceit, and A Female Tycoon in the Gilded Age by Betsy Priolo. I really enjoyed this. I listened to it on audio. I gave it a four star rating. I think this was really interesting and so fun to learn a, about a woman in the Gilded Age who ran one of the most prestigious magazines of the time. I had, she's basically faded from obscurity uh, or faded into obscurity and I think everybody should read this and like get to know um, her, uh, Miriam Leslie. It was absolutely incredible. I really enjoyed it. And then I also finally finished The Frozen River by Ariel Lawhen. I really enjoyed this. I'm giving it a four star rating. This is a historical fiction inspired by Martha Ballard, a real midwife from the 1800s. Um, I really enjoyed the afterwards and which Ariel Lawhen talks about the real Martha Ballard and some of the creative licensing that she took in telling the story and some of the things that were changed. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this. I really liked getting a peek into what people's lives were like um, in this small main town in the 1800s. Um, I didn't think the ending was very realistic, but I liked that there was some kind of justice found for the women of this town because in this time period and not much has changed now most women do not get justice when it comes to um sexual violence perpetrated on them i would say this um does have extreme graphic details about a sexual assault that happens in it so if that's not something that you really want to read i would take a peek at the uh spo spoilers um at the trigger warnings for this book um but I really did enjoy it I really liked the Ballard family and following along um over this time period and um I would really highly recommend and then I did also read 190 pages or 51 percent of beyond the Highland Mist, which is a Highlander romance by Karen Marie Moaning, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that one as well, so I can't wait to keep reading that. But that is the wrap-up of everything that I read. It was a pretty solid reading week for me, and I will and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!